The story was much the same two and a half years earlier in Pascagoula, Mississippi. The Pascagoula Press first headlined the story October 12, 1973, and told the nation about two shipyard workers, Calvin Parker and Charles Hickson, who had their fishing trip interrupted by a glowing, blue-lighted UFO which landed near them. Two humanoids took them aboard for a physical examination, placing them under a large TV-like eye. Scientists were quoted as saying that the UFO report was true. NASA was supposed to probe, but didn't. Federal agencies were asked to investigate, but didn't. Hickson said the creatures from the UFO seemed friendly, but that they acted controlled, as if they had a specific thing to do and did it. They were about five feet high, pale and ghost-like, with crab-like hands and rounded feet. As Hickson and Parker were taken aboard, they suddenly began to float on air, became weightless, and totally helpless. In the Gulf South, from Louisiana to Florida, hundreds of reports to police and sightings by police officers told of UFO activity that same night. No government agency concerned itself with this UFO kidnapping publicly. Luckily, Hickson and Parker were returned. But what of the kidnapped victims of the UFO intelligences who are not returned? Are the UFOs friend or foe? Or are they conducting a project? in which humans become nothing more than guinea pigs. This is serious speculation. Kidnapped victims seem to end up on a missing persons list, and no agency on Earth can locate them. The alien intelligences of the UFO are from somewhere, either in our dimension or from another dimension is difficult for anyone to detect. Misunderstanding the complete dominance of man by the UFO intelligences led the city fathers of Ocean Springs on the Gulf Coast to seriously decide to solve the problem by passing a law prohibiting the landing of UFOs in that area. Alderman William F. Dale, Jr. thought the local police should be able to handle it. It almost became a law. But the mayor of Ocean Springs, Tom Stennis, broke the tie vote. He said, let's make them welcome. As yet, no world governmental agency has demonstrated the power either to make UFOs welcome or to combat their landings and possible kidnapping. It's obvious that humans are helpless. <laughs> Since 1966, the very competent scientific analysts of the British publication The Flying Saucer Review have been assembling all available information about alien intelligences who have made repeated UFO landings in the high Pyrenees mountains between France and Spain. So have the defense authorities of both nations. The UMO intelligences claim they come from what we know as Star System Wolf 424, some 14.6 light years from Earth, 90 trillion miles. Near their home planet, their UFO space travel device enters a black hole in space. A giant energy whirlpool vortex 
which hurls their spacecraft into another dimension in which time hardly exists. From this, they emerge into our dimension, into our solar system, and proceed to their expeditionary target, Earth. Later, the UMOs were to tell the European investigators that the universe was at least a 10-dimension unity. Perhaps even more, they were not certain. But they knew of and used at least 10 dimensions of reality. Each reality was separate from each of the others. Each of the 10 realities had its own rules of energy manipulation. Even though there were 10 dimensions which were open to space travel, Reckless energy misuse in one dimension can disturb the cosmic unity of another dimension and its inhabitants. Telepathy is used to receive knowledge during space travel. The mind, said the UMOs in the quiet areas of space, is especially open to pure cosmic knowledge received by telepathy. Any mentality can receive and benefit from knowledge received by telepathy. The more telepathic ability is exercised, the more valuable it becomes, the UMOs learned, as they learned many of the high scientific secrets of the solar systems they traveled through in their space exploration projects. Target Earth was to be another of their cosmic projects. The UMOs first learned of the planet Earth, with inhabitants of some intelligence, in the Earth year 1950. They landed and left eight of their males and females in the area which had high mountains between France and Spain. Since that time, they have studied the new planet and the method of mental understanding used by its inhabitants. They found Earth science could not account for cosmic beings like themselves. They have carefully made themselves known to certain people of France and Spain, about 30 in all. They have tried to understand the limitations which exist in the mind of man. They find human knowledge inadequate and much inferior to the cosmic understanding, which permits space voyages between the UMO position in the universe and the Earth. miles, Jupiter looks to the Earth-developed eye like this, to the UMO, perhaps different. Jupiter's moon, Ganymede, is some 8,000 miles away and moves in its orbit, its diameter 3,000 miles. The UMO intelligences took a heat measurement of the Jupiter hotspot. They compared the measurements to that of the surface of their sun and found it about the same. The other Jupiter moons were identified. Europa, Amalthea, Callisto, as they were named by Earth astronomers. The spacecraft continued to the next solar system checkpoint, also at the same time slowing its rate of travel. Saturn was identified with its strange moon, Titan. Titan rolled along the equatorial plane of Saturn like a wheel on a road. The UMOs identified its atmosphere, methane. In the vicinity of Saturn, they tuned to the history and the totality of knowledge of the solar system, accumulating